What's going on, y'all? I'm here to talk about the really cool buffs and changes I've made to Amoongus in this ROM hack. So, uh, if you're new here and you have no idea what you're looking at, or if you've never heard of my ROM hacks before, I highly recommend that you pause the video and read the description because it'll give you a lot of much needed uh, context and stuff for how I approach balancing in this hack and all that good stuff. So, definitely pause the video and give that a read, it'll give you uh, context. But, with that being said, uh, I've got Amoongus here. So, yes, a Violet Amoongus. Oh my goodness, you guys can get your. Uh, your uh, your I guess reaction out of the way now because yes yes it's good no it's not balanced around competitive whatsoever or anything like that um, because obviously yes and fucking you know both singles and doubles it would be pretty crazy I understand that but um, also <laughs> if I sound like I'm in a bad mood uh, I'm trying to bulk record and some shit happened but I do want to get these videos out of the way so forgive me if I seem a little bit like I guess, uh, less enthusiastic than normal in my videos. Uh, if you are new here, don't let this be your first impression. Mean, don't let this be your only impression of my channel. Uh, definitely recommend you check out my other videos after this one. Um, yeah, let me, let me try to like cheer myself up a bit. So yeah, because I do want to get these videos out of the way because I don't want to let them pile up because I need to bulk record a bunch. But Amoongus, I mean, it's I don't even know what to say here. It's so self-explanatory. Um, the main thing is that they can optionally evolve into Brute Bonnet, who has his own video. You can check out his buffs and changes. Uh, I mean, you can pause here and look at what they are. I swear to God, I changed this to 109. Did I only do it on... Yeah, okay, that's why. I knew I changed it. Yeah, anyway. Um, so... Yeah, uh, that's you can pause the video and give that a read, but of course I'll, I'll explain it more in depth verbally uh, in the video for Brute Bonnet, so you can check that out after this one. But Moongus themselves, I mean, it's, it's so self explanatory, right? It's an option to keep over Brute Bonnet because, of course, it's much, much bulkier. However, no, um, I mean, so yes, you're, you're quote unquote burdened by a Violet, but it's not necessarily a bad thing, first of all. And then, second of all, um, I mean, Brubonnet has tons of incredible utility over Amoongus. Uh, not only is the typing different, which you might consider to be a bad thing if you're competitively brained, you're thinking Grass Dark sucks defensively, Grass Poison is better defensively. And yes, you're right that, you know, uh, not for the reasons that people fixate on, like the bug weakness or whatever, but mostly just because um, Grass Poison is, uh, you know, for example, you resist fighting. Meanwhile, Brubonnet does that, is weak to fighting. Um, that's one, you know, advantage versus disadvantage. Uh, but also, Brubonnet is resistant to dark, and uh, Moongus is not. You know, you resist fair, you don't resist fair anymore. So they're very different typings in terms of defense. And then, of course, Brubonnet is significantly more offensive, uh, and he's still very, very bulky. I mean, one, you know, 120. 110, 110 if you round it up, and he's got that poison heal, and he's got that spiky shield, and he's got parting shot, none of which, you know, Moongus doesn't have spiky shield or parting shot or anything like that. Uh, he is a very, incredibly bulky, and he's he is passive by this game centers, but he still can do enough damage that he needs to do with, you know, decently high base power moves like Sludge Bomb and Energy Ball being 95 power. Of course, you've got your Toxic, your Toxic Spikes, you've got Body Press, which uh, doesn't work with a Violet, but it's still very good. I would say Acid Reflux is incredible on him. Uh, I thought it was weird at first for him to get Acid Reflux, but Actually, like, if you look at, um, he does get Castor Acid as an egg move, I believe. In, maybe not in this gen. But I know he gets it. I know he gets it, man. Don't fucking play with me. I know, come on, Barrel. I know he gets it. Yeah. Good. Okay, I'm not crazy. So he does get Castor Acid as an egg move, so, I mean, that's enough justification for the TM for Acid Reflux, even though I, at first, I also thought it was weird. Uh, you can also argue me I can give it to most poison types anyway, but I don't know if I agree with that. Anyway, um... Oh, this is mixed up. I should say Sludge Shot and then Sludge Fling. Shot is the priority one. Fling is the speed dropping one. So that's another mistake I just noticed. Um, that was only on one sheet, yeah. So, Brubon, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to it's very self-explanatory. So Grassy Guard is great because Grassy Terrain is now a priority and it's also, uh, we have Movie Liner. So essentially you can run like Grassy Guard, Grassy Terrain, Black Sludge, Leech Seed, and you can like stall for days. Um, you know, with Toxic t or Slash T-Spikes. Um, so that's all very, very good. I mean, Venice Shock as well gives you some really good damage output. You know, because you're so fat, you could just click Toxic and then Venice Shock things to death. Or again, Acid Reflux. Uh, acid Reflux, if you don't know what that does, it's it, essentially it's Acid Spray, but instead of dealing damage, it poisons. Uh, obviously, Leech Seed's incredible. You know, it's very self explanatory a simple Pokemon um, in terms of the changes. Unaware, uh, logically, um, I was half considering Prankster because it does ironically kind of fit because their whole thing is like disguising themselves and like tricking Pokemon, although they do it more in a predatory way as opposed to a prankster type of way. And then also um, I ended up choosing to give that to a different grass and poison type, um, who I think is more interesting to have it anyway. And unaware it definitely fits fine. I mean, it just fits their vibe. There's not any Pokedex necessarily just like justifying an unaware 
I mean, I guess you could say, oh, it's, you know, it tries to confuse people, but it's, you know, or confuse Pokemon, but nobody's fooled. So I, I guess you can argue that, but it's more just their vibe. They just seem kind of like they fit the vibe for unaware. And also, keep in mind, I do have to balance a bunch of other grass poison types and their uh, ability slots. So it's difficult to find an ability that's worth using over unaware, uh, over regenerator. Uh, Grassy Guard certainly is, and unaware is in this ROM hack when AI will often. You know, once in a while they'll have a setup move, especially with like AI only boosting moves, like exclusive to them. Um, so that's really good, you know, to be able to shut those down completely. You also have clear smog as well, so that's even even uh, better synergy there. But even without clear smog, it's just nice to be able to ignore things and sit on them. So that's always a nice utility to have. Um, and then Grassy Guard might seem like overkill because you already have that giant bulk with a Violet. I mean, this thing, obviously, yes, it's incredibly bulky, um, but. Um, there are still some situations, especially on Team Locked, where you need it to take like super strong, even super effective physical hits. Um, and with Grassy Guard Plus, for example, a Violet or a Black Sludge, you can definitely do that much easier. Um, also with Item Claws, there might be some situations where you want to run a Violet on somebody else, so you're not always going to need the extra bulk on Amoongus. Not to mention the Black Sludge healing can actually uh, out-benefit the bulk from a Violet, so both items are incredible on him. You can also, you know, once in a while do some offensive shit if you need him to, like switch him in and click Quick Claw Body Press or Earth Power or something to one-shot something that's like super effective on... It's very niche, but it could could it could matter once in a while. You know, foul play, you got your terrain balls, whatever, all shit like that. You know, once in a while, you could also do some growth shenanigans in the sun if you want to um, for certain boss fights. You know, he does have 85, 85, which is definitely respectable, solid in game when you're using prep. You know, you're clicking super effective moves, that kind of thing. Then it's a uh, you know much more respectable offensive stats. Although yes, he is still like not that strong, but he is 85. Is never a bad stat. It's not it's not low. It's just not that high. You know. Um, it's, 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 it'll get the job done. Um, I mean, it's very straightforward. Uh, Spore is a... Um, so Spore and all sleep moves, uh, all sleep inflicting moves that aren't like drowsy ones, like Serenade and Yawn and shit, all the other sleep moves in the game are lasting for two turns. So essentially, you can... Um, you know, puts into sleep for two turns guaranteed. And because you're slow, you're actually getting those full two turns. If you were faster, for example, if you send in your Amoongus with a Quick Claw and you, you know, your Quick Claw uh, is used up, uh, if you don't know, in this ROM hack, it's a single use consumable item. So you click Quick Claw Spore, you only get one full turn of sleep after that because you, you moved first. Um, but if you move second, which obviously you will be doing most of the time otherwise, because you're slow, um, it's really good. A slow spore is very, very good in this in this game because especially when you're tanky and you can tank whatever the hell they want to throw at you. You know, you can take pretty much any hit at least once, even if it's like super strong, super effective. I mean, not always, but uh, I'd say most of the time, uh, you can take it and then put them to sleep and then you know regenerate out and get your HP back and then also take advantage of that one free sleep turn uh, because you get that full turn that you switch out and then you still have one more turn because you moved to second. If you move first, you only get one turn. So for example, hypothetically. Send your Amoongus, Quick Claw Spore, switch out into, I don't know, your Saws Buck. That's just the Pokemon that's right above this. Saws Buck. Switch into your Saws Buck. The AI is going to wake up next turn. So unless you one-shot them and outspeed them, they're going to wake up. Um, but if you Slow Spore, you can switch out, and then you get one guaranteed free turn to do anything with any Pokemon. And that's obviously an incredible uh, asset to have. They also have Strength Sap, very fitting move for me. I mean, I, I think it fits like most grass types, but especially like Fungus-type Pokemon. Um, again, that's another competitively brain people thing that people might see strengths have a violet amoongus and absolutely lose their mind but again it's balanced around in game where every single pokemon is reworked and all this stuff if you're listening eight minutes in you definitely noticed already so i'm not going to waste my breath explaining it um even some niche like sucker punch you know could uh, could be good not to mention like terra is pretty cool uh even offensively but also defensively you know it just gives you an extra type on your mon it's, it's very useful and fun even if it's rng'd any terra type really is good on this guy um so that's fun um, Ingrain is a really cheesy tool. Um, it gives you plus three special defense and special attack. And Amoongus actually gets no switch moves uh, because I didn't really see any, like, I don't really see Parting Shot on him at all, and I don't see Baton Pass very much at all. I considered it, but I also didn't want him to, like, Baton Pass Ingrain shit, so I don't know. I ended up choosing just to give him no pivot move because that's even more reason to evolve, more incentive, you know, because people, some people are going to be silly and be like, oh, why would I ever evolve? It's a violent Amoongus. That's most broken thing in the game um which it isn't obviously but people might not know any better so there's more incentive to evolve you get the parting shot you get the offensive stuff again i'll cover group on it more in depth in his own video so check that out after this one but um fungus amoongus uh, Amoong uh, fungus is also super tanky so they follow the semi pseudo bst st uh, stat line which is 360 480 into 600 they gain 120 each time they evolve so that's pretty cool um and obviously fungus is great i mean it's super super fat on its own for early game 
Um, obviously, it's weak, but I mean, the early game standard is not weak at all. And then once you get like to the mid game, I mean, by the time it evolves, it'll be fine. And again, it's not like you're using this necessarily to do damage, but you do have like creeping strike, which is a cute little property move you could use. You know, it's it's neat stuff, but it can definitely be used with movie learner. Uh, the sky is the limit. You can really do whatever you want with movie learner, so that's super fun. Um, yeah, scary face is a great debuffing move as well. That drops. Uh, Defense, special defense, and speed. Uh, speed is by minus two, defense is by minus one, so that's really good uh, as well. You can use that even to 1v1 things, you know? Scary phase, toxic venishock, some shit like that. You could totally do that, you know? I don't know. All types of crazy ways you can build this guy. Just getting up one T-spike and then, you know, scary phase, venishocking everything to death, whatever. I mean, it can definitely 1v1 tons and tons of things because of just how tanky it is and how good, like, Leech Seed, Black Sludge stuff is, or Violite is. Um, Sleep Powder uh, is the same thing as Spore, obviously, but you need to run Wide Lens. With Wide Lens, though, it won't miss. Uh, wide Lens is buff, so now it won't miss. So, uh, for earlier on in the game, you get access to a sleep move very early. Um, 23 is, I think, one of the earliest guaranteed sleep moves that isn't, like, drowsy. Because all the drowsy-inducing sleep moves are, honestly, I would I would just never use them personally. Um, I'm not balancing the game around the player really abusing them very much because they're so inconsistent with the sleep turns. If you want to, you can. They're obviously good tools, but I just personally don't intend for that. Um, they're just there just because, of course, people can still use them if they want. Uh, Mega Drain is also an incredible draining move. Mega Drain is 75% recovery, 60 base power, so it's like kind of like Draining Kiss, but grass type and stronger. So it heals a lot more than Giga Drain does overall, but it also obviously does less damage, so it's a trade-off there. And in this case, that trade-off, you know, depends on the situation still, but you definitely will be taking the, the more healing in a lot of cases, I could assume. Um, hopefully my voice isn't too quiet. I guess my, my mic was kind of far away. Hopefully it's fine. Um... I don't know what else to say. I've covered pretty much everything. Copycat. Uh, Tickle Sweet Scent are great debuffing moves as well. Sweet Scent drops special stats by minus one. Tickle drops, obviously, physical stats by minus one. So those are both really good uh, with just how bulky it is and how reliable it is. Worry Seed can be nice to just remove the ability if you need to remove the ability, you know, of, like, Sharpness, Ruthless, all these, like, scary offensive abilities. You can delete those off the AI. Um, obviously, it doesn't work well with, like, Sleep Powder and Sport and shit, but that's not really the, the idea there. Um, Spook is another priority move. Spook is special shadow sneak, creeping strike is bug. Shadow sneak and creeping strike is a TM, so I, I think it fits their vibe. They're sneaky, like, trying to, you know, hide type of vibe. Sludge shot, special poison priority, that's also pretty solid, especially with acid beef flux, you could definitely take advantage of that. Um, I intentionally chose to give them no leaf moves, um, because I personally don't like the idea of them having leaf moves if they're a mushroom. A bit of a autism moment but i don't i don't know i mean in vanilla they don't even get any leaf move by level up they do get leaf storm via tm but leaf storm isn't a tm anymore so suck my balls um it's it's now leaf blade tm instead uh, which obviously they don't really make sense to learn so yeah uh, no leaf storm i don't know i don't really see it personally uh i like to be a little bit strict sometimes with moves and shit i mean sometimes it's the opposite too but it depends um i do think for mushrooms though like for, i don't think i even give it to toad school did i I forget. I know I was debating it. I don't remember if I ended up doing it or not. I didn't. Yeah, so no leaf moves on Toad School either. Um, so that's a pretty consistent thing with Mushroom Pokemon in this game. Um, yeah, I mean, that's about it. Siphon, that's a bug type draining kiss. Super, super, super good. Uh, it heals even more. Actually, it's 45 base power, but it heals 100%. I might end up buffing that back up to 50 if I feel like it. Who fucking knows? I don't mind supporting, like, stallier strats. Although, with Movie Leonard is pretty crazy. I don't mind supporting stall stallier stuff. The main thing I don't like is, like, sweeping, so... Um, yeah, obviously there's some you know nerf and uh, reason like reasonability and balance to this this, uh, this this Jesus God the stall. Oh my God, I was that was hard for me there for a second. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Priority uh, copycat is pretty funny, cheesy move. You could definitely take advantage of that. Mimic for early game is cool. You can copy the AI's move and keep that for the whole fight. Niche, but again with movie learner you can kind of do whatever you want. Uh, synthesis obviously a good healing move. Don't need to cover why that's good. I think I've got pretty much everything covered, man. So thank you for listening. Let me know if you made it to the end of the video. Shout out to you if you did. And, uh, oh, the last thing I wanted to cover with Ingrain earlier is the pivot move thing, because I got sidetracked. Uh, so yeah, Ingrain on Amoongus is obviously very good. However, number one, you're a crit magnet. You know, if you run max HP, fizz def, regen, uh, max HP, fizz def, uh, Ingrain, you know, obviously you're healing a shitload. You can even run Black Sludge or uh, a Violet. It's up to you. Obviously you're never dying, but... There are, first of all, you still will die because the AI will have disruptive moves or things to stop you or uh, guaranteed crit moves even that will crit through the special defense moves, whatever it may be. Um, and not to mention you're trapped on the field if you click angry. And, and normally, excuse me, normally I would say if Pokemon has a switch move, then they are no longer trapped by Ingrain. So you can parting shot out of Ingrain, for example. But in this case, they don't get one. Um, so you literally are, once you click Ingrain, you are stuck. So you better be damn sure if you're clicking that in a lock that 
you, you know you know what you're doing and you planned ahead otherwise yeah, yeah you're, you're sentencing your moongas to death potentially uh, which would be a shame so yeah thanks for listening let me know in the comments down below what you think uh make sure you watch the root bonnet one after you're finished with this one and uh yeah peace <laughs>